Hi everybody, I am Phoenix and today I'm going to be talking about how some parents use their children um, against each other, like as weaponry in some, some war that they're having between each other. Really I think this whole entire concept and this whole situation is really messed up. Alright, I've got a friend that I work with and he's been with this, this girl for a for some time and she ended up having a child to my friend and as soon as she did she took the child and broke my friend's heart and, and when I say that I don't mean she left and he just couldn't take it but she was really malicious about it and there's this fear and there's these talks and my friend have, has this perception that she might try to take the child away from him so that he has no visitation rights no input into the child's life, so that he can't be there. Really, if this is true, in any form, in any degree, if it has even been considered using this child and taking him away, so that, or her away, sorry, so that, you know, the partner, the ex-partner, will be heartbroken, just, just to punish him, that is just revolting and utterly unacceptable. And I think anybody that actually does do this, because like I said, I'm not sure exactly what's happening there, but anyone that actually does do this for certain and uses their children like a weapon in, in, on the battlefield with their ex, I'm not even gonna say you should be ashamed of yourself. Because if I say you should be ashamed of yourself, then you're just gonna fall into this kind of depressive, defensive state of, oh yeah, well that's kind of, that's kind of fucked up. Yeah, I guess I am, I, I, I should be ashamed of myself. I guess I'm a pretty horrible person. Oh, but I'm, I'm fucked up and I'm a horrible person because of him or because of her, because they did this to me, they made me this way. And then it's just a matter of playing the blame game all over again, just pointing fingers back at someone else. Disregarding the three fingers pointing back at you, which people do all the time. Generally, when people are defensive or when they're at fault or something, the worse and, and the, the more severe that, you know, the thing is that they've done that is really bad, the more that they will project, as psychologists call it, or point the finger outward and blame other people. Because nobody wants to be the bad guy. And if they have to accept that they are a bad guy and they should be ashamed of themselves, then they're going to at least try to justify why they are like that by, once again, blaming other people and their involvement. I think if you do that, you should be doubly ashamed of yourself. But like I said, I'm not just gonna leave it there. You should, instead of sitting down and not doing anything about it and not changing because you're just accepting that, oh, I've been damaged because I've dated all these assholes. Oh, no, I don't trust women because they're all bitches. You know, and this is just the way I am, I'm broken. Like, if, if that's your resolve, then that's just pathetic and that doesn't stand it doesn't have one single leg or shadow of a leg to stand on all right so quit being ashamed quit playing the blame game quit feeling sorry for yourself and angry at others and instead realize the reality of your situation and look at how you are affecting those around you everyone around you and look at the big picture i mean when you remove a you know a child away from its other parent or we try to restrict the time severely that they get to spend with that parent or side of the family you're not just hurting the other person but you're hurting your child too and there could be nothing more selfish than this i mean a child's healthy development depends on the input of both parents and families a child is one part this person and one part that person you know yin and yang in order to understand itself as a whole it needs that input and guidance from both people really and it can learn a lot in this situation if you just cut one person out a, you know a person who's only got one parent their whole life might have a lot of issues with their identity finding themselves self-acceptance there might be attributes of that child that that let's say the mother or the father hate, but that the neglected parent could actually help the child learn to accept 
and even love or appreciate. You know what I'm saying? Because generally the attributes of your child, they don't just pop up out of nowhere. They come from you, if you're a parent, or your other half that made the child with you. You know, you both put your genes into the mix and popped out your own little hybrid life form. And for that little hybrid life form to really get a grasp of life and accept itself and live life the, the best way it can, I think you need to put your selfishness aside, your selfish need or desire for revenge, you see your petty problems, and it doesn't matter how big your problems are with the other person, unless they are violent and toxic and dangerous, then yeah, maybe they're best out of the picture, find someone nicer who can fill the spot hopefully so to speak, and you can still have a good family and somewhat of an, a good upbringing with both sexes there, both genders, unless you're gay and then it doesn't really matter as long as there's people there and two people is better than one. Instead of a child developing a singular outlook, two people they can bounce between, they get a more well-rounded development. That's really important. So like, don't be selfish and put that desire for revenge aside and look at the big picture here and look at who you're really hurting. And don't think, oh, well, okay, I'm hurting my child and my ex. I should thrice be ashamed of myself now. Because it doesn't matter how ashamed you feel, how sorry for yourself you feel, how hard you blame other people. At the end of the day, the tree grows how the tree grows. The fruit falls how it falls. And whether it's going to be a sweet apple or a rotten apple, that's reality. You can't change it. And you know what? You helped water that tree. There's no changing that. So if you want to stop thinking about yourself for a moment, if you do deserve this kind of criticism, and look at outside yourself and beyond and into the legacy that you're extending through your child and potentially into the future with their children, then start making big picture decisions instead of making choices that serve your own deluded sense of righteousness, which is really just you being a child, guising that feeling of, oh, I must get them back. It's not cool. It doesn't matter what you say and what you do. It's not cool. So, yeah. That's all I gotta say. Cheers, guys, for watching. I'll catch you later.